Hello friends, this video on improvement in food resources part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us go to the next topic that is irrigation. So we completed our discussion on nutrient management. We saw that how we can give additional nutrients to the soil in the form of manures and fertilizers, advantages and disadvantages of using manures and fertilizers. Let us talk about the second technique that is irrigation. What is irrigation? It is artificial application of water to soil to ensure growth of agricultural crops. Now we all know that how much important water is to the plants. So we all know that how much water is important to the plants. You would have seen that even in our garden we need to water the plants every day. If you stop watering it for some time and if there is no rain, plants start drying up. right? Now, the question is, we already have rains, right? So, the water which we get by rains, is that enough for the growth of the crops? That is not actually. That's because we do not get rains throughout the year, right? So, a, a large portion of the year is without rains. So, how do we ensure that water is being given to the crops? So, that is why we have this artificial application of water which is known as irrigation. So, here you can see a big wheat field which has been irrigated. That means you can see that water is there everywhere, right? So, now we will look at what are the different ways in which the fields are irrigated and why do we at all need irrigation? So why is irrigation needed? That's because agriculture is largely dependent on rains. We all know that. You would have seen that when you go to villages and they see the farmers, they are they will be like eagerly waiting for rains, right? So they'll keep praying God that rain should come today, right? Secondly, there is irregular distribution of rainfall in India. So if you look at this annual average rainfall map, you can see here, see here the the darker the color is, the more is the rainfall there. So here you can see these dark blue shade is there only in certain places like Arunachal Pradesh or Gangtok or some of the northeast places, right? So only few places are there where you have so much of rainfall. Otherwise, there are so many places like Rajasthan or Gujarat or Maharashtra or Andhra Pradesh where you don't see much of rainfall. So it is not only that the rains come only during rainy season, that is one aspect of it. The other aspect is that not all the places get uniform rainfall. Some places will get more rainfall, some places don't get rainfall at all. Right? So that would mean that there will be no agriculture in those places where we do not get rainfall. So in order to get rid of that dependency on rainfall, this irrigation is needed. So when we have irrigation, it doesn't matter whether it rains or not, but you can always have your crop production. Right? So now let us see how is irrigation done? What are the different ways of irrigating fields? Now, different types of irrigation methods are used depending on the different water resources. So, for irrigation, we need water. So, that water has to come from some source. Now, depending upon the source of that water, we have many different techniques of irrigation. The first one is wells, where wells are used as a medium to get underground water. One is canals. The next is river lift systems. And last one is tanks. So these are some of the ways or some of the resources with the help of which irrigation is done. So let us discuss each of them in detail one by one. So let us first talk about irrigation by wells. So when I talk of wells, there are two types of wells which generally comes to our mind. One is the dug well. As you can see in this picture, this is a dug well. The other one is a tube well. So the tube well will have a hand pump so that you can pump the water, right? So the water will come here. So what does these wells do? They actually extract the underground water. The well goes deep inside the ground. Similarly, the tube well also goes deep under the ground. So these wells actually help in extraction of ground water. Water is lifted from wells by pumps for irrigation. Now, how does the water which comes out of the well or the tube well, how does it help in irrigation? Something like this happens. Let us suppose this is the well. 
this is a well here is a motor which will actually help the water to move up so this motor will enable the water to move up this is the ground surface and then they connect a tube and connect it to a reservoir what is reservoir it is nothing but a storage tank kind of a thing so what will happen whatever water comes out of this uh, dug well or tube well that is taken through a tube to the reservoir now from the reservoir uh, our outlet is created through which the water goes to the fields so what will happen this uh, well will keep fetching the ground underground water and this underground water will get collected in a reservoir and from there it will be uh, taken to the fields so in a way we are making use of the underground water for irrigation purposes let us look at the next one that is canals so here you can see look at the picture of the in the famous indira gandhi canal in india so what does the canals do canals actually receive water from river right and then what will they do these canals will divide into branch canals so one canal will divide into many other canals and each of these canals will again divide into distributaries which will go to the fields so the canals will receive water from rivers so canals will take water from river and then it will branch into canals so it will subdivide into branch canals and these branch canals will again have many distributaries distributaries means there will be many other branches coming out of each of the branch canals which will go to the fields and will help in irrigation so they will go to the field and help in irrigation right so that is how canals help in irrigation so there are a lot of canals which have been constructed in different parts of the country to help or to facilitate the irrigation third one is river lift systems now in certain places the canal flow is not sufficient enough because the amount of water which flows through the canal that is insufficient for irrigation so in such places water is directly drawn from rivers for irrigation in nearby areas just look at this example of godavari river basin so this is in andhra pradesh so this godavari river so water will be directly taken from this river instead of the river water going to canal and then from canal to branch canals and distributaries here the water will be directly taken from the rivers and that will be used for irrigation purpose in the nearby area so if let us suppose this river is if this is in andhra pradesh at least the nearby areas will get enough water for irrigation and the last one is tanks what are tanks they are artificial water reservoirs used for irrigation that means they are artificially constructed uh, areas where we can store water now when there is too much of water let us suppose during rainy season when there is too much of rain that time maybe we do not need so much of water so we can store some of the water for later purposes when there is no water so in such tanks we they, we will use them as water storage tanks so water will be stored there and then as you can see here through a pipe it will be connected to the field and there it can be used for irrigation purposes so these are some of the ways by which the fields are irrigated so now the question is for irrigation we need so much of water right so that means we should be sure that we can always supply so much of water so how do we ensure the water availability needed for irrigation because whether whatever means we choose whether it is through with the help of wells or it is with the help of canals or river end of the day water is needed right so how do we ensure more water availability so one important thing is rain water harvesting so rain water harvesting is a very common thing these days and it is a very nice thing because it actually makes use of the extra rain water as i mentioned just now sometimes it happens that there is too much of rain and we really don't need so much of rain water so what we can do we can take some portion of that rain water and store it for later use so that is known as rain water harvesting so how is rain water harvesting actually put into use it is accumulation of rain water for reuse let us look at this example let us suppose this is a house now this rain water harvesting can be implemented in each and every individual home how let us suppose this is a house here you have a pipe 
which is connected, which is from the roof of the house. So now when it rains through this outlet, some water will start flowing through this pipe, right? So some water is flowing through this pipe and then inside there is a, so this arrangement has to be made. For example, let's suppose you have built a house, you want rainwater harvesting to be there in your house because it is actually something which is very beneficial. So now the rainwater will get stored here and then we have a filter connected here. What will the filter do? This filter will actually filter out all impurities and dirt particles and it will not allow the dirt particles and impurities to enter inside. So after that filter it will send the water to the main tank. So this main tank actually acts as the storage tank of this rainwater. Now the rainwater will be stored here and then here you have a pump. So this pump will actually help in pumping the water upwards. The water will come here again, it will get filtered, it will get stored in this tank and from there you can use it for many purposes. For example, you need to water your plants in the garden. So you can utilize this water, right? Or you want some water to run your washing machine or you want for your toilet flush. So in all these scenarios, you can make use of this rainwater. In fact, rainwater harvesting is a very good thing which can be implemented in each and every houses uh, in these days because we, we can actually save a lot of water. Correct. So sometimes during the rainy season when there is so much of rain, we can actually store some of the water and for later use. Right. So this is one of the ways by which we can ensure water availability needed for irrigation. So similarly for irrigation also we can make use of rain water harvesting. Here I have given you an example of how rain water harvesting works in a building. So similarly for irrigation also they store the rain water and then they make use of it in other seasons when they do not have much water. Right. So now, so we saw that how irrigation helps if you put a lot of water to the plants, the plants will remain healthy and you will get a good production. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.